What's going on everybody, it's your boy Jay Rich, back to bring you MLB props for Sunday, July the 17th. Yesterday, I talked about Austin Riley, talked about Corey Seager as my two core plays. Both those guys went over. And then I talked about Vlad Guerrero Jr., said I was staying away from him. Mike Trout didn't play. Wilson Contreras didn't play. Eric Hosmer didn't play. And all my unders, pretty much, outside of Vlad, who I said stay away from because the matchup was still pretty good, did not play yesterday. So if you played Seager and you played Austin Riley, you probably made some money. And again, today, we are looking at another juicy matchup for the Atlanta Braves. And so we will be playing Austin Austin Riley again today. As you can see from the thumbnail, we'll be rolling it back because Austin Riley has been on fire over the last couple of weeks. Right at the top, you see it right here, Austin Riley for the Atlanta Braves. I mean, dude's just on fire. Three and a half total bases per game over his last 14 games up against lefty Josh Rogers. Again, it's very difficult for me to fade him. You know, I've talked about how he's burned me in the past, but again, up against the lefty today, he's got a 315 average, 1100 OPS versus lefties this season. How do you not play Austin Riley against Josh Rogers? He's got a five ERA. He's allowed six home runs, and I believe 26 innings pitched. So a lot of upside for the Atlanta Braves, and we know the Nats bullpen is no good either. So even if they get rid of Josh Rogers early, we know that bat Nats bullpen is nothing to fear. And so we will definitely be playing a lot of Austin Riley today. Then talking about Bobby Witt Jr., Bobby Witt Jr. up against Jose Brios. It's one of those matchups, again, Brios is not Alec Manoa. I'm not trying to say that he is, but he's coming off a very good start. He allowed three runs, 13 strikeouts. Is he going to be back? And for people who don't understand, the biggest factor here is the catcher. They've been playing Alejandro Kirk or, or Moreno behind the, behind the dish for the past couple of weeks, or honestly, past couple of months probably now. And finally, Danny Jansen, their primary catcher, especially from a defensive aspect, calling games, things like that, is back. And we saw the results with Jose Barrios. He played with them early and was pretty good early on. And then, you know, obviously, Danny Jansen's been out, so he hasn't had that rapport with Jansen. He's been dealing with Kirk, who isn't as good behind the dish. Jansen comes back first game, Barrios lights it up. So I think there is some aspect to it there where you have Jansen back and he is going to make things easier for Jose Barrios. Do I think the Bobby Witt is a guy you can't play? No, because Barrios still has struggled on the season, still allowed three runs in his last game, but he did have a ton of strikeouts, didn't throw his fastball, which has been his biggest issue this season. When he throws his fastball to righties, they crush it. And that's the big thing here with the pitch factor. You can see it. Pitch factor of five for just on the fastball alone and still an, a an advantageous position for the curveball and the changeup for Bobby Witt. He's on fire right now. He's playing really, really well. He didn't work out well against Alec Manoa, but he did get a hit off him. I don't hate playing him today, but he doesn't have a total of four or four and a half. He's got six and a half. So they are projecting some something from Bobby Witt in this game. And so that is factoring a little bit. He still has a massive edge and a really high projection, but I just don't know if I could go there. But if you do want to play him, I don't think he's a bad play at all. Then we're talking about Aaron Judge versus Chris Sale. Chris Sale came back, played really well in his first start. Again, it's just one start. Don't want to overreact to it too much. Now he has to play the Yankees. And, you know, the Yankees yesterday put up, I believe, 14 runs. Judge hit two home runs. So did Matt Carpenter, who had seven RBIs yesterday. It's going to be a different story for Sale today. And so if you wanted to play Judge coming off that super hot game, I don't blame you at all. Judge is phenomenal. He's a great player. But I don't know if it's the best spot. He plays pretty well against sale nothing nothing more one side or the other but for me i think that i would stay away from judge but there's a total chance that the yankees just blow the doors off the red Sox again in this one fully possible but i don't think i'm gonna be playing judge today i'm looking at matt olson though i'm looking at matt olson because again like austin riley he has a very juicy matchup and has been on fire lately you see the 12.29 points per game over his last seven 10.57 over his last 14 and still two and a half total bases per game pretty much and an RBI per game. Matt Olson batting ahead of Austin Riley most of the time has been hitting a ton of bombs at home runs and just like honestly it's it's hard not to like these guys in this matchup you know you could play Acuna as well if you want to play him he hasn't been playing as well that's not why he's on as high in the projection system but he is a great option I just think that Atlanta is going to just run right through the Washington Nationals today and again it's the last day before the all-star break so playing pitchers is tough you don't know what their leash is going to be like no one wants to get hurt but these batters if they're in a good matchup they're just going to tee off on guys all day long we may see position players pitching today just just because they just need to make it through the break, right? They need their pitchers healthy through the break. They need these guys to play, but the batters, they're just going to keep swinging all day long. So I do like Austin Riley and Matt Olson in this matchup quite a bit. And then getting into Corey Seager versus Chris Flexen. You know, we've been talking about Corey Seager, it seems like all week, just on fire, 13.92 over his last 14, 14 over his last seven. So many reasons to like Corey Seager in this matchup, 3.31 total bases per game. 
but Flexen is a pretty good pitcher, right? You see the 0.8 pitch factor and the actual P-Val factor of 2.9 because he has been a little bit better. It's mainly due to the fastball, but the biggest factor here, you can see the slider and the cutter are the advantage of Flexen. So if he kind of stays away from the fastball with Corey Seager, he may get the better of him, but Seager is playing phenomenally well and he does have a projection of eight. So you do need to overcome that a little bit. Again, I do love the Atlanta stack in this one. I think they're in a great matchup today up against just a terrible team, throwing nobody out there of consequence, probably don't care whether they win or lose. They're probably just trying to just get through the break. And so that's why I really like Atlanta. But if you do like Corey Seager today, he did hit a triple yesterday and had another hit. So while they lost the game, he did perform quite well. And then Giancarlo Stan in the same matchup up against Chris Sale. Don't love it. I'd probably stay away from that. But if it was me and if it was my money, you know, I'm looking at the unders more so than anything else. You see Wilson Contreras, how terrible he's been playing lately. He didn't even play yesterday in the second matchup up against Max Scherzer, where I wanted to take the under. And then Jorge Soler up against Aaron Nola today. Aaron Nola is no joke, man. Cy Young candidate playing phenomenally well. Projected for 2.18 points, line of five and a half, and he's only averaged one point since coming back from injury. You see it here. Yesterday, he put up a bagel. He even got pulled early, over three, two strikeouts. So up against Aaron Nola today, I just think there's no way in hell he goes over. Again, he's projected to only get two points. He might draw a walk. He might get a hit. Fully possible, but expecting Nola to pitch very well in this matchup. They shut him out 10-0 yesterday. I would not expect much different today with Trevor Rogers on the mound. So I do love a Solaire under. I'd probably be looking at Riley and Olsen together with a Solaire under. If you want to throw in Wit in there, I don't hate it. But overall, I think Riley and Olsen are just two phenomenal plays. If you want to throw in Seager because of how well he's been playing, I like that as well. But yeah, again, Riley, Olsen, and Solaire, I think are the three guys that are just, it's very difficult for me to not take those picks. I just think they're in great spots. They're, they got tons of upside or downside in the case of Solaire because you do have an ace on the mound and you have a guy with very little experience up against an extremely hot Atlanta lineup. I think I'd rather stack that together. And as well, the other one I was talking about with some of the guys I talked to about baseball picks, I was looking at Jose Barrios' strikeouts over five and a half. The only thing that concerns me is, again, the whole break of it all. It is the all-star break. It starts tomorrow. So these teams, there's not a whole lot of incentive to run their starters out there for long periods of time or really tax their bullpens. Like All of this stuff kind of goes out the wayside because normally when you look at a team like the Toronto Blue Jays yesterday, they ran seven pitchers out there in a game against the Kansas City Royals. Today, if it was a regular circumstance... They would need some length of their starting pitcher. So you want to play that starting pitcher knowing he's going to have to throw a ton of pitches to try and help that bullpen out a little bit after the bad start yesterday. And Brios trying to be that ace of the staff and wants to do that, carry that load. And we saw that with Max Scherzer last night just carrying the staff for the Mets after they played in extras in the first game, ultimately went to extras in the second game. So again, I don't hate the five and a half. I don't think it's a terrible play terrible pick by any stretch i definitely think there's a world where he gets there we saw gosman hit six we saw manoa hit six against the same royals so there's a lot of things to like with brios i just don't know if i'm all the way there but i think it's a great line if you want to take over five and a half strikeouts for jose brios totally endorse it think it's a great pick but i'd be sticking with austin riley matt olsen and jorge soler and if you wanted to throw in the brios over five and a half strikeouts i like that one as well thank you guys so much for watching make sure you drop me a like and subscribe for your content and i will see you guys after the all-star break let's make some money let's bet on the home run derby that would be fun i bet soto to hit the longest home run at plus 500 so if you like that bet that's pretty fun and as always if you tail give one hell and if you fail do not bail i'll be back after the all-star break and you guys enjoy the all-star game enjoy the home run derby and i'll see you guys later i'm out peace